Okay, so we're going to do an additional problem here that is at the APC level. We're going to be playing around with some calculus. Now the main calculus relationship that we have for momentum deals with impulse, where impulse, which is equal to our change in momentum, is also equal to the integral of f dt. All of these are vectors, in this case the direction of the impulse points in the same way as the direction of our change, our delta p, I should say, our final minus initial. And then it's also in the same direction as the force that is supplying that impulse. So I'm going to have a question in which I ask you what the final velocity, the final, of an object is. If I tell you that I am applying a force as a function of time, and that force is as follows, 3 newtons minus 2 newton per second squared t squared. That is the function that describes the force that I'm applying. So over time, that force changes. Okay. I'm also going to tell you that, because I'm going to look, I want to know what happens in a period from t equals 3 to t equals 4. And I will tell you that the velocity at time equals 3 is equal to positive 1 point, where is that? Oh, positive 2 meters per second. The mass of my object is equal to 1.5 kilograms. That might be useful information. Okay. And the final thing that I want is v final, which is the same thing as the velocity at t equals 4. They're the same thing. All right. So let's get started. We know that we start off with some velocity, 2 meters per second. And we know that there's a force being applied to it that follows this equation. Okay? Well, since we're probably going to be using impulse, let's convert our velocity into an initial momentum because our delta p here is going to be p final minus p initial. Or for our situation, that's going to be the same as saying our momentum at 4 seconds minus our momentum at 3 seconds. So let's start off by finding our momentum at 3 seconds. Okay, so momentum at 3 seconds oops, is equal to our mass, which is 1.5 kilograms, times our velocity at 3 seconds, which is 2 meters per second. All right, so we end up with, that's what, 3 kilogram meter per second. Awesome. So we've got our initial momentum. Because if we can find our final momentum, then we'll know how fast it's going at the end. Okay, well, all we're given is our force as a function of time. So if we use our impulse relationship, we can do the integral of f dt equals our impulse, which equals our change in momentum. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. We've got integral of f, where my force was, where is it at? Three newtons, so three minus two, T squared. Okay? That's my force, dt. And we're going to evaluate this from 3 to 4 seconds. This will be equal to my impulse. Now remember, these are vectors. In this case, we're dealing in one dimension. So we're keeping track of that solely with we either have positive if it's moving to the right or negative if it's moving to the left. So let's see what we come up with. We end up with, <coughs> pardon me, I evaluate this integral. I'm going to split this up where I've got the integral evaluated from 3 to 4 of 3 dt minus the integral evaluated from 3 to 4 of 2 t squared dt. And that's going to be equal to my impulse, which is equal to delta p. I'm going to do this quickly. We've got, what's that going to be? 3t evaluated from 3 to 
4 minus, what's that going to be, 2 thirds t cubed, also evaluated from 3 to 4. That's going to be equal to delta p. I'm going to cut out the impulse guy there as a middleman because we know that we're interested in our momentum. Okay, so I evaluate this. I'm going to be dealing with evaluating all of this from 3 to 4. So if I look at the 3, for instance, I'm going to end up with 9 minus, what's that going to be? Do I have that written down? Uh, I believe that comes up to, let's see, do I have that? We'll just go ahead and evaluate it real quick. So 3 cubed times 2 thirds. That's going to be 18, so minus 18. So this ends up with a, oops, negative, negative 9. And this is our function, our force evaluated, or not force, our impulse evaluated at 3. Our impulse evaluated at 4 is going to be equal to 12 minus, uh, let's see, 4 raised to the third power, so cubed, times 2 divided by 3 equals minus 42.66. Okay, so the 6 is repeating, so 42 and 2 thirds. We're going to take that. We'll have negative 30.6 repeating. Okay, now finally, we want it evaluated from 4 to 3, so we want impulse evaluated at 4 minus impulse evaluated at 3. So this is us finishing up that integral here. To make this a bit simpler, I found out what the value of this was evaluated for 3. That's this guy here. And then I'm gonna, I found what it was evaluated for 4. And to finish up the integral, I want the value of 4 minus the value of 3. Okay, well, this is going to be equal to, here's my value for 4, negative 30.6, repeating, minus a negative 9. Those negatives are going to cancel out, and we're going to add together. So we know that our impulse during the period of t equals 3 to t equals 4 comes up to... negative 21.6 repeating. An impulse as units of kilogram meter per second because it's equal to our change in momentum. All right, so now we've got this finished up. We know that our impulse equals our final momentum, so our mass times our final velocity, minus our mass times our initial velocity. This is delta P. Okay, well, we just found out that that is negative 21.6, repeating, kilogram meter per second, equals our mass times our velocity at t equals 4, the thing that we're looking for, our final velocity, minus our mass times our initial velocity, which we found way back up here. Our mass times our initial velocity, that's our momentum at time equals 3, and we found that that was 3 kilogram meter per second. You can also go back in, that guy is 1.5, that is 2 meters per second, so we plug that in and we still get the 3 kilogram meter per second. So I'm going to add this to both sides, plus 3, plus 3. And I end up with, what do I get? So that's plus 3, so that's negative 18. Is that right? Um, yeah. Negative 18.6. I want to make certain that I'm not making any mistakes on this. Although it'll be my luck, I'm going to overlook something important. Mass, velocity at time 4. I'm going to divide by the mass to get my final velocity, which is what I want. This is 1.5 kilograms. So I divide this by 1.5 and I end up with my final velocity. My velocity at time equals 4, also known as my final velocity, equals negative 
12.4 meters per second. Because of the nature of my force, where we have a term that as time goes on, so this is our answer. It is negative 12.4 meters per second, which means that it's moving off to the left. That actually agrees with what we'd expect, because if I zoom way back up here, we've got a set 3 newtons is the force, and over time, this other term here that increases with time, that's a subtraction. So as time goes on, the force gets more and more negative. It points or it pushes even harder to the left. So after a little bit of time happens, we end up with a situation where with the constant force, or with the non-constant force, I should say, but the force constantly pointing to the left, pushing it to the left, of course, you go far enough, and you're going to find that the object begins moving to the left. And in fact, at this point, as time continues, it will continue moving faster and faster off to the left because the net force is pushing it that way. Okay? So this is how to deal with a non-constant force using impulse and to find out what our, how that will change our momentum.